Hi folks, we're back with Marty Sands, and we're going to talk about a, a very unique decoy in Wisconsin. It's the earliest form of decoy that's found in Wisconsin. It's called the Lake Koshkanon decoy. Okay, Marty, why don't you tell us a little bit about the Lake Koshkanon decoys. Uh, how did they develop here? Why did they develop here? Uh, tell, uh, so just give us some background history. Okay. Uh, first of all, I guess that there's a lot of history and research in this area, but um, the lake was uh, uh, a gathering place uh, for um, Native Americans uh, for hundreds of years, and it was uh, I, I, there's a there's a name for it, but uh, the Kashdan means something. Uh, I think the lake, the, I think it's the place we live. Uh, but it was a gathering because of the waterfall um, and all the animals that lived around the area, and uh, the uh, Native Americans had one of the largest concentrations of uh, effigy mounds, um, which are the animal-shaped mounds all over the lake. Um, and a lot of the early settlers, um, you know, were attracted to it for all the wildlife. But the lake um, was, it's a, a widening of the river, and um, it's uh, somewhere in the range of, you know, uh, between two and four miles wide, and uh, somewhere in the range of, I think, six, eight miles long. Uh, and it is a, just a shallow basin, and at the time when the first settlers came here, it was basically, they said it looked like a field all the way across but it was just wild rice and wild celery underneath. And that's what attracted all the ducks. And you were saying that the average water depth was pretty shallow too, right? The average water depth was, uh, they said between, um, they said it ranged from four to 12 feet deep, um, but at different times of the year, it'd be probably much shallower. The spring would flood and the summer would drop down, which would let all the grasses grow. And it was really very clear and clean. Um, but they, uh, you know, was the, the concentrations of canvas packs were unbelievable. So, and so with these large numbers of ducks, you're going to attract duck hunters, right? Yeah. And so, is that how uh, this yeah, uh, style sometime of decoy? In, sometime in the early on, there was actually a um, they called it Indian Ford. It was like a it was like a beaver dam or something or a, a slow spot in the river that kept the lake as high as it did. And it was a couple miles downstream, if I recall. And uh, they ended up building the dam up that point. And the first time they built the dam up, it probably helped create a little bit more water space uh, for ducks and probably helped promote canvas packs. And uh, by that time, in about the 1850s, uh, markets were very popular for you know bringing in food and everything for people to live on. And canvas packs were obviously a delicacy. Um, so um, as early as uh, some of the articles, 1855, there's an article where a guy had shipped, I think it was a uh, Couple thousand ducks to Chicago markets, um, and he was he was market hunting. And they don't talk about decoys at that time, but I wouldn't doubt, you know, too soon after that, you know, the decoys started, um, and uh, it became known as the Chesapeake of the West um, from all the market hunters. <laughs> so, what is the oldest documented Lake Koshkanon decoy that you're aware of? The only thing we know is we don't know any carvers. Um, to, for, there's a one or two possible uh, a number, one of the decoys. Uh, this is a Shannon decoy, and they usually are branded Tallman. Um, and the family history, the Tallmans were prominent people. They had a hotel um, in Janesville, and they um, the family the family history says that the Shannons built the decoys for the Tallmans. And that's the only oral history that's known of any of the carvers from the area until the later, maybe the, the 20s, there's a few decoys that are um, known to a carver. But all the early stuff, we, we suspect somewhere in the 1860s through about 1900, um, and the reason 1900 is somewhere around there, carp were introduced and the, rake, the lake was raised again, and they basically in about 1905 they said the lake died and the canvas backs stopped coming through. So, Marty, can you give us some more information on distinguishing features of these Lake Koshkanon rivers? Okay. Besides some of the distinguishing features of the, the kind of upward slope uh, along the lines of some of the upper bay, like Daddy Hollies, um, and some of that other stuff, and also the iron keels, um, is the, they had brands, um, like a lot of other areas. But the brands are interesting because a lot of the brands are like this on the bottom. Tallman might have been a personal rig. There's also um, a number of brands that are on the back, 
and it's one of the only areas you see a lot of big brands, and the brands were mostly hotels. Kashkadan Place was a famous hotel. Um, Taylor's, um, there's no known brands from there, but another Taylor's Hotel was another one. Um, Hort, uh, Hort, Hort Hotel was another one. You see a lot of brands, and a lot of them they be stamped on the top with Kashkadan Place, and then on the bottom they'll be stamped Hort. And a lot of these hotels change names, so they'll have multiple brands, and they kept reusing them. Um, and so you'll see one or two styles. Uh, this would be the style of most of the hotel-style birds. It would have a brand on the back, and also then have a brand on the bottom, probably a later brand uh, from the second hotel or, or so on. But like I said, the iron heels are a little bit different than the Maryland birds. They have a stake in the front only, and they're basically a piece of round stock that are snipped at the end. Where a Maryland bird would have almost like a horseshoe that was nailed, that was hammered in. And one of the interesting things about these decoys is they have a very similar style um, to the uh, Maryland Upper Chesapeake Bay. And what's interesting about it is uh, uh, one of the people that did some of the original research was Bob Lemple. He did a couple articles um, in Decoy Magazine. And uh, he was trying to get, find the connection between these style decoys and the early uh, Daddy Hollies and some of the other early Susquehanna Flats birds because they have a lot of similar styles, but at the same time, many differences. Uh, one of the common themes is a lot of them have um, the iron keel underneath like a Maryland bird would have. Um, and also the style of the body, swept back neck, but at the same time, a bit of a different. Folks, we now have uh, Bill Sands, who's Marty's brother, that's going to tell us a little bit about uh, the sirens of these Lake Koshkanon decoys. So Bill, why don't you uh, show us some of the uh, styling features of these decoys and uh, how they're similar in style to uh, decoys from the East Coast. Um, first of all, the, uh, as Marty had referenced to before, uh, Bob Lemko had written a number of articles uh, theorizing, uh, the, trying to connect the dots between Maryland, the Chesapeake Bay, and Lake Hoshnall. Uh, and some of the theories have revolved around, well, these birds were shipped out here from Maryland. Um, and I'll show you a few examples here. Um, this is a uh, John Daddy Holly, um, Upper Bay, Chesapeake bird. Um, this dates to probably 1870s, 1880s. Um, I know that because of uh, the brand on it, which is the Reckless was the famous Stunning Scout uh, in the Upper Bay. Uh, you can see some similarities. This is the Harvard Grace um, style, kind of upswept tail, uh, no apparent neck shelf. Um, and when you then look at one of uh, our known caution on decoy. Now, this one, this particular one, doesn't have a hotel brand on it, uh, but some, a lot of them did. So we know that they're uh, here on Lake Kashan. Uh You'll notice the upswept tail. Uh, again, no apparent head shelf or neck shelf, but you do see uh, kind of that swept back head. And as a carver, as I am, you notice things that it almost looks like the body and the head were carved separate, and the head was just placed on the body. And when you look at when you look at them side by side, you'll see that that, you know, is essentially the same in the upper bay style birds. Uh, you also notice that upswept tail, um, that general kind of shape and form of the bird is very, very similar. Uh, but then you'll start seeing some differences. Um, as Marty pointed out, you have different iron, the, excuse me here, uh, the different iron, different styles of iron keels. Maryland birds always were uh, driven in on both ends. Uh, most caution on birds were only driven in on one end. Uh, the other thing that you'll notice um, is the you know is the, is the V bottom in a caution on bird versus the more round bottom in a Maryland bird. Uh, obviously, when you look at them again side by side, you know this particular bird is a little flatter. This one's a little bit more rounded. Um, obviously, uh, John Holly was a carver for you know 50, 60 years. His style did change over the course of time, um, but. I have never, in all my years of collecting uh, upper bay birds, I've never seen a style quite like this. Um, this one's actually uh, branded P.S. Bliven, which was an owner of the hotel here in Lake Hashna. Again, 
This bird, a little bit different, no neck shell. Um, a little more of that rounded back that we'd see in the Maryland birds, uh, same tail. But again, Pashkanon bird with uh, the V bottom, uh, the, the iron keel that's driven in with one, you know, up front. Um, this particular bird is a little bit different than this bird um, for a couple of reasons. Uh, just the, the, the finely carved and carving of this bird. I mean, if you look at this close um, at different angles, the, the carving on this bird is, ex is exquisite. Um, really fine form, where this cost this costume number here is a little more crude, which is a little more simple, you know, um, and a little more in tune with the upper face style. So, as one cool, it theorized that these birds were possibly shipped out from Maryland. Um, it is my opinion, and only my opinion, that these birds are actually made here. Um, because of the difference, because of the difference. And this particular bird, I kind of demonstrate why. Um, again, very similar um, to a Upper Bay Daddy Holly. Uh, same shape, round bottom, but on this particular bird, um, you'll notice the square tail, which is, um, if you look at a lot of Kashkanon birds, it's very Kashkanon birds, the square tail and how it's how it's formed. Um, but this particular bird, round bottom, everything else. So, did this bird arrive here? Possibly. But I think what happens is people came out from Baltimore, hunted the canvas backs in the Chesapeake Bay, but wanted to get maybe a little early season hunt, so they brought decoys with them. Maybe there wasn't a lot of decoys here, so they brought decoys with them. They left them here at the hotel or at a cabin or as a gift to their, their guide, and then the locals said, well, hey, I can make this, and they used this as a template and as a pattern to start carving decoys on their own. Obviously a little bit cruder, some little uh, um, nuances to the bird that make it uniquely uh, Kashan, Obviously, that's you know in the different styles we see here, we see the, a lot of different variations. Um, this particular bird here, as I mentioned before, is a shrimp, um, but different than a lot of other costume on birds. It has got a very typical board neck, a board head that you see in a lot of uh, upper bay birds. So while the body has no real influence, or very little influence to the upper bay, there is some connection in the in the styles. So, Bill, tell us about uh, these birds. Uh, are they very collectible? Are there a lot of folks out there that are collecting Lokashkanon birds? There, there's a few um, hardcore, I'd say, collectors. Um, most of the Kashkanon birds are still being found in barns, uh, antique shops. Um, and like we talked about earlier, one of those reasons is there's a lot of variability. Um, you know, it takes a, kind of a trained eye and what you're looking at to know if it's a Kashkanon bird. Obviously, we talked about a few of the details, the, the, v, bot, the v bottoms, um, the similarities, the checks, the chest and stuff. Um, but there, there's not a huge following. Um, the birds do come up from time to time, uh, you know, in, in places that are not just, you know, in this area. Uh, so, for stories from so if somebody was interested in, in starting uh, to collect things and they were looking for a unique style, things that, like you said, are could be a barn find, mm -hmm. uh, this might be a style of decoy that would really fit into oh, someone absolutely. that, that was looking for that kind of collecting. Absolutely, style. and it's it's one of those things where you start getting into uh, like finer car birds um, or the documented, you know, uh, birds with uh, brands of four or caution on place. Um, those are going to be a little bit more collectible, but um, in general, you can find a lot of a lot of these birds, you know, they're, you know they're relatively inexpensive price compared to, you know, Masons and Evans and you know Illinois birds and things like that. Um, but yeah, you can find them, and then they do. Most of these birds, like I said before, are pre 1900. So if you're into the, that era, um, you know they're they're out there. Yeah. So these these are could truly be hidden gems. Oh sure, absolutely. Great. That's great. So if someone wanted to, to uh, learn some more about these birds, you mentioned the Decoy Magazine article. Yep. Are there any books or any other articles no. out there? <laughs> no. 
Um, there, there is, there is some articles um, about the history of Lake Hashanah. Uh, not, a, not a lot about the decoys themselves. Um, you know, as pointed out, uh, there's this article, Decoy Magazine, um, uh, and it's something that I, I recently started for the people that are Facebook fans and you know the internet age. Um, I did start a, a group on Facebook uh, for Kashan on Decoys. Um, our intent is to have people that maybe have one in a barn or in their house uh, to post up a picture and share it. And maybe uh, try to learn as much as we can by pulling as much information from every source we can. So how would they find you on Facebook? I, that's a good question. I am sort of a Facebook person, but I think you just type in Kashan on Decoys. Um, I believe it's actually group, groups caution on decoys. Um, so you can uh, post a picture, um, you know, share a story, any knowledge you know. Um, you know, it's, 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 there's not a lot of people following yet, but hopefully after this video and after this show, we, we can get some more followers and we can start sharing that information and learning about uh, these decoys because uh, Illinois River, you know, uh, other Wisconsin birds, Eastern, you know, Maryland birds, they all have a strong following. There's a lot of information out there, um, but we're really starting from scratch. Great. Thanks, Bill.